Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear friends, while designing any structure, designer must consider lateral loads along with the gravity loads on the structure. There are mainly two types of lateral loads which act on any structure. First one is the earthquake load or seismic loads and the second one is wind loads. In this video series, we will discuss about wind loads. Wind load analysis is an essential part of the structural design. If wind load analysis is not done correctly, then it may cause the destruction of non-structural components of any structure or even the destruction of structural components as well. Building codes have been designed which includes detailed procedure to calculate wind loads applied on any structure. Many design engineers will feel difficulty to calculate wind forces for structures using ASCE 7 specifications. That's why they prefer wind loadings from UBC 97. Well, it's true because there are a lot of things which need to be account for calculating wind loadings using ASCE 7 specifications. But we will try to make these calculations simple to help you understand easily. We will use ASCE 7-16 specifications, so let's begin. Buildings and other structures including main wind force resisting system and components and cladding must be designed and constructed to resist wind loads. In these specifications, there are 6 chapters which covers all aspects of wind loadings for structures. From chapter 26 to 31, all things are related to wind loadings. This chart shows the distribution of the wind provisions. Chapter 26 covers all general requirements and parameters for wind load calculations. There are two categories for which wind loads are calculated. First one is the main wind force resisting system. And the second one is components and cladding. Further, there are three methods to determine wind loads on structures. First one is the directional procedure for any building height, which covers in chapter 27. The second one is envelope procedure for low-rise buildings, which covers in chapter 28. And the third one is wind tunnel procedure for any type and any height building or any other structure, which covers in chapter 31. While chapter 30 will cover wind loads calculations for components and cladding CNC, Directional and Envelope Procedures and Chapter 31 will cover Wind Loads Calculations for CNC using Wind Tunnel Procedure. Let me tell you briefly about the above procedures first. First one is the Directional Procedure. A procedure for determining wind loads on buildings and other structures for specific wind directions in which the external pressure coefficients used as based on past wind tunnel testing of prototype building models for the corresponding direction of wind. The second one is the envelope procedure, a procedure for determining wind load cases on buildings in which pseudo external pressure coefficients are derived from the past wind tunnel test of prototype building models successively rotated through the 360 degrees such that the pseudo pressure cases produce structural actions, for example, uplifting in the building, horizontal shear of the building and bending moments and that envelop their maximum values among all possible wind directions. The third one is the wind tunnel procedure, a procedure for determining wind loads on buildings and other structures in which pressures, forces and moments are determined for each wind direction considered from a model of a building or other structures by placing it in a chamber in which wind is blowing artificially and the engineer will observe the response from the building or any structures that is placed in that particular chamber. We will see the general requirements and parameters by taking example problems and calculate wind loads for these example structures. In this way, we can better learn and understand considerations of these requirements and parameters specific for the structures. Let's first understand the general action of wind loads on any structure. For example, this is a structure and these are 
reference axes when may flow in any direction regardless of any axis but we as a designer always try to find out the worst effect so that's why we consider two main directions for wind flow in which the wind get maximum affected area of the structure these two directions are the principal axes of the plan of the structure in this case x and y are those axes for the structure shown when wind flow on any structure it hit the surface externally and if a structure has openings in the walls then wind will enter into the structure as well first let's see the external behavior of wind when wind flow from negative x to positive x direction then this surface is getting pushed inward similarly wind approaches further by either pushing the roof inward or uplifting the roof depending upon the slope of the roof and then it approaches further such that the opposite surface get pulled by the wind similarly for the perpendicular direction of wind which means from negative y to positive y direction same action will happen now let's discuss the internal behavior of wind when wind blows from negative x to positive x direction then wind enters into the structure through this opening if this side is having more opening area than this side it means that rate of entering the wind into the structure is greater than rate of leaving from the structure so that wind try to blow out from each internal surfaces but when this side is having more opening area than this side it means that rate of leaving the wind from the structure is greater than rate of entering into the structure in this case wind try to suck each internal surfaces inward now let's discuss about the surface of any structure any structure has generally two surfaces one is walls and the other is roof these surfaces are categorized into two the first one is the windward surface the second one is the leeward surface when wind action is towards any surface then the surface is called as windward surface and the wind pressure on it is positive but when the wind action is away from any surface then the surface is called as leeward surface and the wind pressure on it is negative now let's understand this concept on our structure this is the plan of the structure when wind flow from negative x to positive x direction this will be the windward wall and it get positive pressure and this will be the leeward wall and it gets negative pressure now what about these walls these walls are called side walls for this wind direction and they will also get negative pressure as leeward walls now see the elevation view for this wind direction this side of the roof is called windward roof and this one is leeward roof windward roof may get positive or negative pressure depending upon the slope of the roof while leeward roof will always get the negative pressure all these actions on walls and roof occurs simultaneously now wind flow from negative y to positive y direction this will become windward wall and it get positive pressure now and this will become leeward wall now and it gets negative pressure and these will become the side walls now and will get negative pressures as side walls always get sucked out by the wind means having negative pressure and in the elevation view whole roof get negative pressure similarly internal pressure of the wind is positive when wind try to blow out from the each internal surfaces and it is negative when wind try to suck each internal surfaces inward this was all about general mechanism of wind when it hits any structure inshallah in upcoming videos we will try to understand the calculations by doing it for variety of structures I hope I made you people a little clear about basics of wind loads.
If you like our video, then please hit like and subscribe button and share as well with your friends. And you can comment below for your desired content or video. I will try to make that content for you. So this is up for today. See you in the next video.